Hi, I'm Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and today I have a tutorial showing how to make this lacy paper netting. All you're going to need is paper and string and glue. That's it. That's all you need to get started making these fun, kind of mysterious pieces. Once you know how to do it, it's actually pretty straightforward, not difficult at all. It's a little bit messy, but the results are worth it. So please join me if you'd like to learn how to make these yourself. If you like journal arts, if you like book and paper arts, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and be sure and turn on the notifications. And you will have more of them in your life. Let's go make some paper. I have been infatuated with paper with holes in it for a long time. I bought this at a paper boutique. I think it's made from bark. I also am crazy about the work of paper artist, artist Inez Sidel. And Here's a couple of photos of her piece, some of her pieces where she's using paper and threads and then putting those together and then pulling out bits of paper to make something completely different. And you can see this is just a newspaper. Here's another uh, piece of some of her work. I think this is rag paper. It looks like it. And then this piece also has a lot of newspaper elements on this grid of string, making it evocative and mysterious. And for years, it's been in my inbox, my things to do, to try to figure out how to incorporate uh, paper with holes in it into my own work. One problem, I had no idea where to start. Until recently, when I bumped into a video here on YouTube by paper artist Louise Janetta. In this video, Louise Janetta shows different ways to tear holes into paper. Well, nobody had to tell me twice. I took some of her ideas and then I experimented. I played around and uh, put my own spin on it and I was off and running. Which is what you are going to do as well after I show you some techniques. I have linked in the text box below this video, both to the original video by Louise Janetta and the website of Inez Sidel, if you would like some inspiration, there it is. So let's get started bef because before you can turn these techniques into your own, you need to learn the basics. Let's go. First, you're going to need something to protect your workspace. I'm using some parchment paper. You could use wax paper or freezer paper or any kind of plastic surface that you like. Next, paper paper. We're going to talk about some adaptations and different uses of paper later on, but it doesn't get more bog standard than what we're going to start with, which is tissue paper. And this came wrapped around something that I ordered online. And then I saved it because it's free art supplies. Uh, you can make this any size. You can make it quite small. You can go wall-sized. But to give you an idea of the basic technique, I thought we'd just go with this medium. Next, you're going to need some threads, some strings. I'm using twine because twine is what I have on hand. Also, I'm twine mad. Love that stuff. But use whatever strings, whatever threads you have on hand. Experiment with different ones. And to get these to come together, you're going to need some kind of a glue. And I recommend this uh, plant-based, starch-based paste. I showed how to make this paste in yesterday's video. So if you missed that and you'd like to know how to make this homemade starch paste, the link is in the text box below, or just go to the video before this one. 
You can use a white glue, uh, it, and, and by all means, give it a try. But since we want to tear these papers, I actually think that a starch paste is going to be more friendly for that. It's super inexpensive and very easy. So check it out. Now, as you can see, that even though I made this paste with two parts corn flour to eight parts water, it's still pretty blobby. And uh, we can fix that. I've just put some here in my container, and now I'm just going to add a bit of water. Not too much, just a little at a time. And then work your paste to get it more gooey so that you can put it on your paper with a brush. We need a little bit more. That's not too bad. Tissue paper is very fragile, and when you add your liquid-based uh, starch to it, it's going to become even more so. You may get some rips or tears. Don't worry about it. This whole technique is about tearing paper. So uh, don't, don't get too hung up on that. Here's a hack that might make things a little less uh, wonky. I've gone round and I've marked off the rough dimensions of this paper. Chum, 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 chum. And now I'm going to go ahead and paint my paste onto the greaseproof paper, which is more robust. And that is going to let me put my paper on top of it. And give me a little bit of a head start. Now I am going to add some more paste. It's hard to explain. You need to be gentle but firm. Don't be afraid of the paper. Now it's covered. You cannot see that. I can't see it very well. Um, if your strings are going to kink up on you, you can soak them in water first. But I'm just going to kind of put mine down and hope for the best. As for your grid, it's very much a matter of, again, personal style. Uh, some of the grids I've seen are outrageous and curly and wavy. And in, in circles. And some of them are very irregular. So that you have lots of different shapes. Of squares. Which is going to give you some options as well design wise. But I'm going to make this one fairly. Fairly checkerboard like. Again, just to get the idea of the original technique. And pulling through a little bit of that glue onto the, the strings to help them stay into place. This grid is finished. It does have a little bit of a wave to it. That's fine. It makes it look more organic. Now I've got my second sheet of tissue paper and I'm going to lay it over the, the grid of string like that. Press it down gently. Now to add another layer of the paste. Here, be aware that it, as the paste goes over these threads, it might want to, that would be some place it might want to thread, uh, tear. So be a little bit gentle, but make sure that you're getting everything well covered with the paste. That's what's going to make this, instead of being two pieces of paper and some string, it's going to become one cohesive thing.
Remember when we used to make paper mache with bits of newspaper over a balloon? Think of it like that, except instead of a balloon, you've got strings. And the idea is that you want to make sure that your strings, your paper is worked into those and around those strings. So try to make sure there's no air bubbles. There's one there. And as it dries, some of these, the paper will shrink a little bit and some of those bubbles will also go away. Now to gently lift it, peel it so that we can make sure that we've got enough glue on our base. This one is pretty well, because the tissue, tissue paper is so fine, the paste has already gone through all the layers. But if you're using a slightly thicker paper, make sure you turn it over and get really good coverage of that paste on those strings. Now I'm just gonna come in so you can get a little bit of a better idea of how it looks. And again, that tissue paper has just gone so translucent that you can hardly see where it is on the parchment. But do not fear. Leave it, let it dry, and when it is very dry, overnight is best, you will be able to peel it off of the paper. When it's dry, it looks like this. And I wasn't expecting this, but I already love how this looks. I would have no problem at all adding a tea stain or some mark making, watercolor wash to this as it is, and then just binding it in to some journal work. So put that in your notes, a happy uh, accident here, uh, another paper technique from this, uh, these ideas. But let's put holes in this one. To make your holes, you can just punch it out with your fingernails or I've seen a lot of videos that use palette knives. I haven't got one. So I'm gonna try these tweezers. I've got a brochette. I don't know what this is. It was on my desk and it looked apt for hole making. I've also seen tutorials, videos, where people have torn the holes while the paper is still wet. That did not work for me. By all means, give it a try, but uh, I've, I've given up on that. You can poke in your holes where the paper is dry, like this. And just tear a little bit off. There you go, you got a hole. I'm not trying to pull this hole out perfect like a, a stamp out of this square. Uh, I don't want it to, I want it to look irregular, but also when I did try to pull some of them out on the square as an experiment, just punch it out, a lot of times the paper just pulled off of the threads so that I just had the thread there if you did your whole piece like that, you just have a, a charming bunch of thread. But we, nothing wrong with that, but this is a, a different one. So you can do it dry. You can also get a little bit of a wet section by section, which is gonna make your paper more and make it more fragile again. And weirdly, even though we're tearing messy holes, have a little care because like I said, you don't want to pull the paper all the way from the threads. So just for my money, I'm just going to be making these little messy holes like that. You can do 
the whole piece like a checkerboard. Bum, 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 pull all the holes and it's going to be a cool look. Or you may want to make some holes and then leave some pieces intact so that it is uh, random and fun looking. You've got to experiment with that and see what, let the paper talk to you. What, what does it want to look like and what's expressing what you feel? So try it both ways. Start tearing holes. I am so happy with how this turned out. And again, uh, you can use it in a lot of different ways in mixed media, but I'm probably going to be looking at binding it into a journal or using it as a cover. You can go with this parchment color. You can also add color to it. Watercolor wash, ink. I'm going to do some coffee. And this is just instant coffee and water. I'm not going to do the whole thing. I don't want it to be too matchy-matchy. But now it's got even more of that uh, texture. Because the coffee and the color is going to go into these edges give you even more texture and interest and yowza how cool is that while that's drying let's look at some adaptations of this technique this is also using tissue paper but I've made a much simpler broader grid it lets me get nice big holes and it's just a different look. And again, you could fold this into some book binding, or you could do some mixed media stuff, layering it with some other papers. So now you've got, you can see, you've got layer and texture. I also made some pieces using, instead of tissue paper, using paper napkins. And... This one with some dusty roses. And I'm, I'm not finished making the holes, but you can see where I'm going with this. And on this one, I'm going to leave quite a bit of the roses intact, and I'm mainly taking out the white pieces. So this is going to really look like some messed up tapestry. If you're going to use a paper napkin, be sure that you peel the layers apart. Most paper napkins have a couple, one, two, even three white layers. So peel and peel and peel until you have the absolute lightest, thinnest layer left. And then add your strings and another layer let it dry. It's going to look like this. Play a bit around with different textures if you if you like working with napkins. These are some that I got at TK Maxx. I don't know about yours, but mine has a party section and they have favors and stuff and fun party napkins. And that one did pretty well. That one popped. I think you've got the contrast between the prettiness of the and the sameness of the butterflies and then the uh, tearing, peeling wallpaper look here. Yeah, that this looks like it could be tearing wallpaper from some old timey house. Let's see. This is tissue paper 
and it looked like this. Some patterned tissue paper. It's a little more robust than the original white tissue paper that I used, but I do like how it turned out. And I think I am going to add some wash to this to pull out these maroon colors. We'll see. But that turned out well. And here I have taken away pretty much every square so that it is more of a checkered board. And I want to show you again how this looks if you layer it. So here's another paper napkin. And if I was to put this in an art journal page, uh, I could either layer them loosely like that or glue them down together. So you've got lots of uh, texture and interest to the eye. I tried this with newsprint, a la Inez Cidel, with <laughs> um, what might be kindly called mixed results. I'm not unhappy with it. I want to work with it uh, a lot more. But um, I did kind of like this one. And this is just using some pages from the Times Literary Supplement. It is pretty thin newsprint, but it's not as thin as a tissue paper. So when I put down two layers, now it's, it's a little bit more robust. In fact, so much so that I've gone... I wanted to show this because in this one I went a little bit more less rough torn and that's because the paper itself is quite stiff and it seemed to lend itself well to more of a block tear. Let's see how that looks layered. Ooh, that could be something. So I'm going to keep working on that and experimenting with the newsprint. Uh, here's one that I haven't started tearing yet, but I wanted to show it because it's, again, using... It's using the white part of the paper napkin. So it's two thin white napkin pages. But here I used a contrasting color on the twine. So even though it's very subtle, because this paper is so light, it's going to let that blue color show through. And I'm going to get a different kind of look. So think about using contrasting threads. I, I'm even going to try it later. Instead of threads, I'm going to try using some lace like that with a really thin paper and see if the lace shows through. So play around with it. Experiment. And now this makes me so happy. Okay, it looks pretty ordinary, but in the best possible way. And that is because it was made from a kitchen towel, a simple paper towel. And I found this out dead by accident when I was cleaning up and, and using it for glue. And then I went and picked it up later and it, it looked translucent and fine like parchment. Happy days. Yep, that's a paper towel. I'm going to continue to tear out there and make more of a pattern. Again, this paper towel had two plies. So I separated it. And again, it's pretty fragile, but it worked. And when that dried, it looks like mystery parchment. And nobody has to know. Unless, of course, you want to be smug and brag, as one does. Let's look at some other ways to add some color and uh, interest. This is that kitchen towel. The paper towel that, uh, yeah, that's it. And now I'm just going to add a watercolor wash. And 
and then I could go in with some other colors. Let it pool a little bit here and there. So just experiment with that. Ink is also going to work well. And I actually have some, uh, this is fountain pen ink in water in a mini spritzer. Yep, that's going to look cool. And let's see, I've got this one. This was the paper napkin. And which side? That looks good. Uh, again, I've got some, uh, this is avocado ink that I made and with a little bit of water. Oops, it doesn't want to work. Let's try this one. It's the same thing. There we go. That's the color. So you see, it's very much going to contrast and pick up some of those dusty rose colors. Just distressing it, making it even messier. Now look at this. A few weeks ago, I did a video here on YouTube about how to turn magazine pages and coffee table book papers, glossy papers, into this almost fabric-like piece using a technique called momigami. And that is uh, paper kneading and folding. And showed a few ways to use it in journals, as a collage. But look at this. When I was preparing papers this week, I thought, why not? So I took two of the sheets that I made, the momigami, and I glued them together back to back with the thread grids. Now, most of the papers that I've been working with today are fragile papers, easy to tear and um, distress. This, when two pages were glued together, became very fabric-like and very robust. So I dampened them and I rough tore them anyway. And you know what? I am pretty happy with how this is turning out. I'm probably going to work with it some more, try to maybe add some more color or layer. But boy, this is the start of something big. Layer it like this or something. So if you made some of those momigami papers out of magazine pages and you're not quite sure what to do with them, why not combine these techniques and see where it takes you? That is essential to trying out this technique. Just playing around, experimenting, and seeing what kind of papers work and don't work. And even if you try it and it's not a complete success, it's only paper, it's only threads and some paste. If it's not a wild success, at least you've learned something and that's not nothing. Although I am look, <laughs> I actually like how that's turning out. Let's see. There are, as I said, I'm probably going to be binding these into art journals or maybe even making them into a cover. They can also go into an altered book. I, I could just get this oversized altered book I'm working on and I could just glue that down and hey presto, what a page. I can tell you right now that back in the day, I might have taken a piece like this folded it, threaded some ribbons through it, blue ribbon maybe, and made it into a bracelet, which, yeah, I would have worn, I don't know, with a white t-shirt, art piece kind of thing. In fact, I'm tempted now. 
I'll keep you posted on that. So that's how that one turned out with a little blue ink added. to work on that different look and here is the first piece the tissue paper with the coffee stain and boy do I like that do some layering over some text that would look really really good and in fact it actually in fact it actually reminds me a little bit maybe a cousin to that original bark paper in the first place. If you have any feedback, any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Let's compare notes. Join me next week. I've got a what's new in the studio video and another paper arts tutorial. Until then, get up and go make something.